Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to this week's installment of Fabricator Series Segments where every single week I upload one more chapter, sometimes two, of how to build a two chassis front end which is demonstrated on this S13. So, if you are not subscribed already to the Fabricator Series YouTube channel, absolutely go down right now and push that button so you don't miss the next week's uploads. If you're not familiar with the Fabricator Series, head over right now or after this video to the Fabricator Series uh, dot com and, and there you'll find the build blogs on how to build a two chassis front end where each week there will be another episode posted and in there you can get onto the discussion of everything, ask questions, talk about it amongst everybody else and all kinds of other good stuff. There's also a lot of great stuff for you to learn while you're over there. You can also check up on facebook.com slash the fabricator series. There's always another upload, another update, something else going on and I'm also a big fan of Instagram so head over to Instagram at the dot fabricator. Check all the information below here, and I'll have all of that there. If you need to get a hold of me, send a message, drop a comment, drop me an email, do whatever you got to do, and I'll always try to get back to you. So without any further delay, here's this week's episode of How to Build a Tube Chassis Front End. get a good guesstimate here figure out yeah I'm close no I'm not somewhere in there I know that I'll have to trim it up to get it to actually fit in here and that's perfect that's exactly what you want so one thing I do want to add up top here is a place to mount the fender to and I'm gonna kind of spice it up make it look pretty nice keep the weight reduction low the strength up and I'm gonna run gusset plating with, with uh, dimple dies in them so the gusset's gonna have to start at the top of the tube and run underneath the fender to another tube that I have to run underneath for more framework. So, in order to get the spacing correct with the dimple dies in there to make sure that the height is set correctly, uh, I'm gonna have to set up some sort of a system here in which, in this case, I'm just gonna kinda clamp in a couple pieces of sheet metal. It's a little primitive, but it absolutely does the job. And then I'm going to actually take my dimple die, just kind of line it up in there, set it up against the fender to make sure that I have more than enough space. Now I'm going to take the tube, and I'm just going to set it on the top actually. Make sure I get my height right. Now I'm noticing that my headlight bucket is in the way. So, but I can sit here and look at this at the same time and realize, okay, the tab is next to the tube, so it shouldn't interfere, and where I want it to land on the chassis rail, it shouldn't interfere there either. So we're pretty sure we're good to go. So I'm going to take that headlight bucket back out, and then we'll line this up again. Okay, let's run this one again here. Now, for right now, I have to just get my height measurement or my uh, distance to end up cutting off the chassis rail. And I'll switch angles here in just a moment to show you that. But I'm going to place my dimple dies right in between the tube, just as a, as a good guide here, as a good space measurement here. So, what I do want to make sure is that I have this tube right here parallel with the side of the chassis rail. Okay, and, and that's going to help me determine here at what point and what angle I need to cut off the end of the tube in order to make it made at this space, at this amount of distance here. So let me switch angles real quick here and I'll show you that one. So again, with my dimple die setting my correct amount of spacing, I do need to make sure that this tube right here, or this section of the tube is parallel with the chassis rail or the side of the chassis rail here. These two need to be parallel and as equal as possible. So you can use your eyeballs, it's best if you actually take a measurement. Now I did this kind of off camera here for a moment to make sure that I had it correctly and I did already mark it. But for the purpose of demonstration here, we're going to hold it up in place right where it's at there. And we'll make a mark right at the point and at the same line at which the angle needs to be cut at. And that's where I'm going to go cut it, exactly like that. Okay, so 
this is one of those moments where uh, you kind of need to be at one with your skills and uh, really trust them. Because if you don't, uh, you're either going to hurt yourself or you're going to make this cut incorrectly. And, well, neither one of those is a good thing. So I do have faith in my skills, so I'm going to have a go at this. Now, if you're not at one with your skills and you don't trust yourself or you don't have a chop saw, whatever the case is, you can absolutely hold this tube up, trace around at the angle that it needs to be cut at, and, uh, and cut it by hand. You can do it with a, a, a you know, reciprocating saw, a, a you know, cutoff wheel on a grinder, you can do it with a hacksaw and a vise, well, whatever, whatever suits your fancy, but you definitely want to try and get this angle as correct as possible. So I'm going to see if I can nail it right here with the chop saw. So I'm going to line this back up again, set my dimple dies for correct spacing. And it looks like I nailed it. Pretty cool. So now we've got to do the top side. And this is going to be absolutely no different than the, uh, than the bottom side as far as how we set it up and measure it. So I'm very simply going to uh, kind of just line that up right about where I want to see it go in. Nothing big, nothing, uh, you know, we, we can do some trimming. But, you know, we can allow it to be undercut just a little bit. Now on this one, I'm going to mark the side of the tube because that's going to show the actual angle at which this needs to be cut at. So we upward like this. We'll mark the length and the angle at which it needs to be cut. So I'm going to go feed this into the saw and I'm actually going to undercut this only slightly so that way I can allow some movement and adjustment. We're going to have to put the headlight bucket back in again to make sure that we got it fit and cut and set up correctly. So I'm going to run this back in real quick and we'll see how close we get. All right. Of course, undercutting always a good thing because uh, I still have to trim back probably about a half an inch until I get that lined up at the bottom where I want it. What I'm going to do real quick is uh, I can't hold these uh, dimple dies in place underneath. So I'm going to mark the uh, chassis here about where I need the tube to land. And we're just going to go to the center of the tube and make a line reference here. So when I stick it underneath the sheet metal here and place it up top here, I know exactly where the center of that tube needs to land, and uh, I don't have to have the dimple dies here in place to hold it all in. So Now I'm going to trim this back just a little bit each time, just a little bit more, a little bit more, and we're going to get it to the point where it actually lands where it needs to be, which in this case, as I hold it up here, it's only probably about a half an inch or so since I did undercut it before. So let's get this trimmed off again, and we'll see how close we are again. So I'm getting closer each time here, it's just a little bit. I'm just going to keep on subtracting just about a quarter to a half inch each time. I know that, that, that this needs to go about roughly a half inch to an inch uh, rearward of, to the car, so I'm going to trim off just another half inch. So I've made just a couple little final trims with the grinder and I've got it just about right where I want it to. So I'm going to line the center of the tube up with the center reference that I made earlier on the chassis. And we're going to see if we can get this kind of placed in where it needs to be. Pretty sure I got it right where I want. But I'm just going to toss in a tack weld to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. That'll hold it in place for a minute while I tend to the bottom. Now, of course, the tube on the other side is already placed, and I took a measure of that one to the end of the chassis, and it comes out to three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is line this up, take a measure, hold this in place again. I'm actually going to get my welder ready. I have my hands backwards for a moment. So both sides of the chassis are going to be the same, and the other tube is already in place. So I measured it just to confirm there were three quarters of an inch. 
So I'm going to hold this in place and throw a tack on it. I'm going to confirm my measurement here. It's three quarters of an inch. So I also have to uh, verify the height measurement that this tube from the bottom of the chassis to the bottom of the tube is also going to be the same. We're going to go measure that one in just a moment. All right, so we got some work to do up front. So I'm gonna have to pull this front end off of here, and we'll get to that. What we can also do is verify the measurements that we have for each one of these tubes and ensure that they are correct. Because right now it's kind of hard to access them with all the front end on there. So it's not like it's hard to take this off and put it back on. So if we're off a little bit, then we reassemble and off we go. That's one of the convenient things about using the Klecos is you can just simply just pull this piece apart and voila. Alright, so I ran my measurements just a few moments ago and uh, I realized that this tube right here was actually a quarter of an inch too low. So I had to lift it up just a little bit, re-tack, re-weld it, everything, now it's set in place. Now I do have it measured out correctly, length, width, and height. So I just need to make sure that the, the uh, angles on both tubes are exactly the same still. So I've got eight degrees on this one, which is right in line with that fender where I wanted it. And I've got eight degrees on this one. So we're good. Now there might be a fraction or two or a tenth of a degree or whatnot that it might be off, but that's not that big of a deal. So, but other than that, tubes are in place. Everything is basically balanced out and sitting correctly. I'm satisfied with it. So uh, I'm gonna leave them just kind of tacked in place right now, but strongly tacked in place. So I don't wanna have anything like a, you know, twisting or bending of the chassis or bumping the tube or anything like that would, would knock a weld out. So I'm gonna throw a few more tacks in place, but leave them accessible in the event that I have to cut the tube off or something changes or whatever along the way. So I'm not going to fully weld it just yet.